Hello everyone, welcome back to one other episode on my channel. How are you guys doing? I hope you are doing very well and fantastic, also healthy. If you remember, a few videos back I explained about GraphQL, kind of an introduction to GraphQL and I explained how it can be a, a other paradigm on this uh, API world, right? So there I explain uh, what is the ca uh, capacity and why we use GraphQL and uh, how GraphQL works basically. So today I'm going to go a little deep and I'm going to explain you and I'm going to show you practically how you can create GraphQL and how you can work with GraphQL. So that video I explained GraphQL is nothing but a server right so go go back and watch that video if you didn't watch it is kind of a must to uh, before this video because without that video if you don't have a proper understanding of the GraphQL you'll be confused this video so go back and watch that video uh, before you come here and also if you're not subscribed yet it's a time to subscribe because we are going to talk a lot more about GraphQL and we are going to go deeper and deeper about GraphQL and use case and federation and so many stuff right so good things to come so in that video I explained GraphQL is just but a server so today I'm going to show you how you can create that server and how you can getting start right so I'm going to create a separate playlist for GraphQL and I'm going to add all the videos to that GraphQL playlist right so even later on uh, you can go and find those videos and make sure you watch in order otherwise you get confused okay so um, Actually, GraphQL is kind of a language agnostic. That means you can implement GraphQL with any language, right? For easy of use, I'm going to show you with uh, Node, but you can do the same thing with uh, Java or you can do the same thing with uh, whatever the language you prefer to use, right? So I'm going to first create the uh, project with npm init, right? So I'm going to give uh, yes for all, okay? So I have a project now. So I'm going to open code uh, on, on this pro uh, project right newly created project do we need to use the microsoft visual studio code no it is not you can use whatever the uh, favorite server you have favorite ide you have but i prefer code uh, so i'm going to use it right so right so i got my window and uh, so don't worry about this data uh, directory right so i just uh, created some dummy data to this course so that is what uh, inside that data directory. So if you created this project, you will just get the package JSON file, right? So you can see uh, these are the uh, default uh, pa default uh, package JSON file. So I'm going to uh, create some um, install some packages here, right? In that video, I explained you can uh, use any GraphQL server as you prefer, right? So I explained GraphQL is just in uh, specification, right? You need to find implementation. I'm going to use with uh, Apollo server. Uh, but you can use uh, whatever you prefer, but I'm going to demonstrate with Apollo server. So I'm going to use uh, Apollo server and as well as I want to use GraphQL libraries, right? So I'm going to use two, two different libraries uh, to this project, right? So I need one other package that is a node one. Why I need node one? Uh, because I don't want to uh, restart uh, my GraphQL server every time when I do a change. So node one, when I install node one, node one will take care of everything. I don't have to worry about restart, right? So I'm going to install node one as well. But I'm going to install that as a development dependency. Right, so you can see uh, I installed uh, three packages, uh, Graph Apollo Server, GraphQL and node one, right? So that's all I need. So now I'm going to uh, create my uh, first uh, GraphQL project. And uh, again, don't worry about this data directory. You will not have in your uh, machine, but I, I'm having this because I created a bunch of data to support uh, this project, right? So don't worry about that. You can uh, ignore that. So I'm going to close it. Okay. So I'm going to create a file index.js, right? So first I'm going to uh, get this, uh, Okay, so let me make it a little bigger. Oops. So I'm going to close this project view so you have a full screen. Okay. First, I'm going to create Apollo server. For that, I'm going to use const. And you, you may familiar with uh, this destruct. And also, I need uh, something called GQL. Right. 
right? I'm going to uh, start this. Uh, I'm going to create a server. Now I'm going to start this server. So I can ask to take the port from environment variable, but till that I can give default port as well. Right, so I'm asking to uh, run on a port 4000 by default. So why this, okay, this has to pass as an object. Okay, so once the server start, I'm going to uh, use again this struct. Right, I'm going to take the URL out from here. Okay, so what I'm going to do when I when the server start, I'm going to print the server started on this particular URL, right? So now good. Now now we have a server and now we can start the server as well. So now run a GraphQL server, I explained that previous video, we need three things, right? Mainly three things, right? So we need to tell what are the queries we are going to expose and we are going to tell what is the definition of the type and also we need to give the data. So we call this as a schema, right? So we need to define a schema. We don't say we have this, this and that, we need to have a schema, okay? So let's create a schema uh, for our server. So I'm going to tell, uh, but this is my type definition, but I need to use a specific syntax. It's a little bit weird, a specific syntax for that. That's called G, GQL, right? I need to use that, right? And I need to use, I'm going to use the back ticks to uh, use the multiple lines, okay? So first I'm going to tell, my first type is a query, right? So this is my query type, right? So I'm going to expose employees right so that is array of employee right so now I'm telling in my GraphQL server I'm going to expose a query as employees and that will return array of many employee right employee type objects so now we need to tell GraphQL server what is this employee look like right okay let's do that for that, I'm going to tell this is my employee object. I'm going to tell first name. So type is string. Okay, so these are my uh, properties for my employee type, right? So I need to define one other type called ID. For that, I'm not going to type as an ID. I'm going to uh, type as a string, but I'm going to type as an ID, right? But ID always should not null. ID must present, right? So I'm going to tell that saying this, right? Exclamation mark. So that indicate this is a not null field. Okay, so now um i'm almost ready but without the data right my schema is ready remember go with the order right so if you graphql server don't understand data right graphql server is just a facilitating export data as graph right so as a graphql server you need to tell what you are going to expose this is what we said right we are going to expose employees if someone called employees what they would get they would get employee type object right and but not a single object it will be multiple it will be an array right and then you need to define what employee looks like right employee looks like this right so now i need to pass this when the server start right i need to pass this when the server starts so how i can do that i can pass type devs here okay i can pass type devs here so now i'm good with my server Right, so now I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, I need to I need to create my start script. So I go package JSON, and here as a start, I'm going to tell this 
node one index.js. Right, now I can use npm start. So let's see what happens, right? So it worked. Okay, let's go back to my browser and browse this URL local host 4000. Right? So now you will see this one. So this is a what, why I like Apollo because it has so many built-in stuff to help me to uh, go my journey. As you can see here, they give us something called playground. We didn't create this, they have created that for us, right? So if you go this right hand side, you will see docs and schema, right? If you cl click on the schema, you will see this, uh, it has a, like it, it exposes our uh, schema to this playground, right? So we call this concept, this is a feature of GraphQL, we call this introspection, right? So GraphQL servers has a built-in concept called introspection. So what it does is, it can like tools like playground, they can send the request to GraphQL server and get this information extracted, right? Also, if you go to the docs, you will see uh, it documented my uh, type, right? What are the fields and what are the data types we have, right? So this is the beauty of this because if we didn't write the schema, right, and then we can come and see, okay, what's what's going on, like what's going on, what are the types it has, and what are the queries it's exposing, and everything, right? Okay, so let me to uh, like if you go here, if you go to inspection, right, and you will see in this network tab there are a bunch of. Um, calls going on right these are very complicated payloads right so if you get this this is a huge uh, request payload going from this playground to a uh, graphql server but we don't have to do any of these and because this playground doing those uh, on behalf of us now you have a question how are we going to deploy this on production no when we go to uh, when you go to the production we are going to stop this we are going to shut down the playground we don't send the playground to the production okay so let me to go for a rest client Right, and I'm going to create a, a new request, right? So my, let's say it's a GraphQL request, right? So GraphQL always get the post request, right? It doesn't matter what, it's always get the post request. So my URL is HTTPS, HTTP local host 4000, right? And body type is a GraphQL, right? So it's a GraphQL query. Now I can send some data, uh, I can ask certain data from my uh, GraphQL server, right? For example, let's say I'm going to uh, ask, tell me about this schema, right? So tell me about the schema and also tell me the types, right? And out of the types, tell me um, name, right? What are the available name on your server, right? So now you can see it return all the types available on the server, right? So now if you have a particular type, you can ask that also, right? So these are called introspection, right? So you can ask uh, type, so I need a name and fields of the type employee, okay? So now, oops, I made a small mistake. Type also type object, so type also has a name, right? Okay, mm, why it comes as an L? Okay, so this should be employee with the capital E. Okay, so now you got it, right? So now, with the introspection, I can uh, ask GraphQL server to describe my schema as well, right? So now, what we have done so far, if we, uh, if we like uh, recall this, right? So what we have done, in a graph, we create a GraphQL server, right? Remember, GraphQL server is like an empty server, you don't know anything now you introduce what you're going to expose you're going to expose employees from uh, the server right so what the employee looks like i created the type definition and when i start the server graphql understood what is my employee and what i'm going to return right so now in the next video i'm going to show you how you can inject data to this and expose data through this graphql server right so remember we are going to dig deeper and deeper and deeper through this graphql so stay tuned make sure you subscribe and also make sure you share this video with your friends right so next video let's i'll show you how you can expose data through this server